So everyone, I hope my audible and visible. Just uh, give me a second. I'll just check if my audio video is fine. Now I request all my dear students to kindly uh, be live for all my classes on Anna Academy. Just uh, give me a sec. Yes. So I think my audio video is fine. And uh, welcome in this amazing session of dermatology with me, Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, your neat PG educator. Now just a brief introduction. I'm Dr. Cheshta Agarwal, who teach uh, dermatology on the best online platform that is Anna Academy. I have myself scored all India rank 261 and. I will be helping you out with the same so that you can get a good rank in your exam as well. Now, currently we are providing some subscription offers, so I want all my students to kindly have a look on all these offers. Yes. So uh, on Unacademy, we are right now providing 20% discount on any of the Unacademy subscriptions. And I'm very sorry, this date is a little behind, but you'll have till 22nd of till 22nd of July. This offer is valid. I request all my dear students to kindly use my referral code CHESHTA10 and get your subscription. Kindly use my referral code CHESHTA10 and get your subscriptions. We have many new batches which have started. Uh, these batches are the NEET PG batch, INICT and FMG batch. I will be showing them at the end of the class. So let us start with the today's first, uh, today's first uh, question. I hope everybody is ready. Can I get a quick thumbs up from all of you? Arrange the following structure in the skin in order of top to bottom from the most superficial to the deepest one. We will have a lot of clinical case based question also and we have a lot of new pattern questions also. So first of all please answer this question. Nazma, Manali, all of you. We have a lot of questions today. I request everyone to please answer this question. Arrange the following structure in skin in order of top to bottom from the most superficial to the deepest one. <clears throat> Now please remember, in your skin, the cells are attached with each other with the help of a glue which is known as desmosome. So the intraepidermal keratinocytes or cells are attached with the help of desmosome. desmosome. And please remember, one of the component of desmosome is desmoglein. The last layer of the epidermis which is stratum base cell, it is connected to the basement membrane with the help of hemidesmosome. The basement membrane is made up of uh, many components, one of them is laminin and just beneath the basement membrane we have dermis which constitute collagen 7. So what will be the sequence? The sequence remains option number 1 that is A or 1, second is B or 2, then we have D or 4 and then we have C or 3. So 1, 2, 4 and 3, 1, 2, 4 and 3, the correct answer is option number 4. Is that clear? So very, very simple and easy question from the basics. So very simple and easy questions from the basics. Now let's move to the <coughs> next question. Please tell me what is the correct answer here. A farmer who developed a single papule on his left index finger within a week of handling his goat, the papules enlarges into a hemorrhagic bulla and healed after 3 to 6 weeks. Lesion was diagnosed to be of ORF. Identify the incorrect statement regarding the diagnosis. Bonzit, Ashima, Sovik, Manali, Nazma, very well done all of you. Farmer developed a single papule on his left index finger. What is the answer? Anyone? So the question clearly mentioned that the diagnosis was of the ORF infection. Okay. If, if I mark the highlight points here, one is ORF and second is secondary to handling the cattle, goat, sheep, etc. Now, whenever a patient develops a lesion at the site of inoculation, it is nothing but a very classical ORF infection which is known as ichthyma contagiosum. Ichthyma contagiosum, it is a parapox infection, not the coxsackie, parapox viral infection. We do not need any antiviral because we have to treat the patient symptomatically and for all the viruses whenever you do a histopath you will see ballooning degeneration or intracellular edema. So the cells becomes very large. The nucleus is pushed towards one end which is known as ballooning degeneration. Clear? So Manali, Ashima, Nimisha, Bonjit, the correct answer or the wrong statement here is option number 2. If anybody has any confusion, they can simply say yes or if no confusion, I can go ahead with the next question. Anyone with any confusion? 
The next question is here on your computer screen. 45 year old male had multiple hypoesthetic mildly erythematous large plaques with elevated margin on the trunk and extremities. Ulnar and the lateral popliteal nerve of the right sides were enlarged. What is the answer? Now remember that the leprosy topic is very important because this year recently we have, a, we have got a question from the same topic that is leprosy uh, in NEET PG as well as in INICT and FMG. So this becomes a very important topic. We can expect a question from this topic again this year also. So I would be requesting all my dear students to kindly uh, read this topic very well. I will be teaching dermatology all of you the classes of the batch INICT is starting on 26th of July. So I request all of you to please join an academy. You may need to use a code. Code is Cheshta10. And if you use this code, currently we are providing 20% discount. So anybody interested can join this batch. Okay. The answer to this question is borderline lepromatous leprosy. Now why this is the answer? Why not lepromatous leprosy? In lepromatous leprosy also you will see a multiple lesions, right? So please note down very important feature. Whenever you get a patient question of leprosy, clinical question of leprosy, try to find few words like few or multiple. If question says few lesions, few hypoesthetic lesions, it means either of these two either TT or DT how to differentiate between them in TT you will see one or few lesions in BT they will definitely mention something about satellite lesions which are the small lesions present little distant to the main plaque understood so if question says few plaque it could be either TT or BT but if the question says multiple lesions you have to look whether it is asymmetrically distributed or symmetrically distributed Asymmetrically means question says that if a patient has multiple lesions on left forearm, left leg, on one side of the body, it means we are dealing with a patient of BB, borderline, borderline. But if the question says that we have bilaterally symmetrical, multiple lesions which are symmetrical like this question, then either BL or LL. Now how to differentiate between them? Please remember in BL you will see associated hypoesthesia but in LL you will not see hypoesthesia over the patches you can see glove and stocking type of loss of sensation but no hypoesthesia over the patches so please remember you have to use this trick to solve the questions of clinical leprosy clear anyone with any doubt you can just write it here if you have any doubt please let me know the next question is on your computer screen it's a sequence based question you sometimes get these type of questions also sequence based questions arrange the following stages of doing an ospit sign in order of their time of occurrence in the test from the earliest to the last from the earliest to the last silvery gray grat edge pinpoint bleeding or bulkley's membrane what is the correct answer Anyone? Arrange the following stages of doing an ospit sign in order of their time of occurrence in the test from earliest to the last. Now please remember what is the sequence of doing an ospit sign. So let us use red color. First of all there should be a scaly plaque that is a prerequisite. Now you will use a glass slide, you will rub the plaque and you will see that there is sudden increase in the scale. This is known as grattage. You are rubbing these scales with the help of a glass light. When you do this, you will see that there are so many scales. The scales becomes more prominent. And when you remove these scales, you will see a very shiny membrane which is known as Bulkley's membrane. And please remember, in the end, when you remove the Bulkley's membrane, you see pin point bleeding areas. So what will be the sequence? A b d and c a b d and c very nice bonjit nilu ashima abhi manali very well done all my dear students the next question is on your computer screen it is an assertion and reason type of question dermal melanin is seen in lichen planus the reason is 
wedge shape hypergranulosis is seen in lichen planus animal what is the correct answer what is the correct answer here anyone very nice now look at the assertion and reason assertion says that dermal melanin is seen in lichen planus is it true or false first tell me what happens when you see dermal melanin remember that whenever the melanin is present in dermis the color becomes violet or purple clinically the lesion becomes violet or purple and we are sure that in lichen planus we have violet or purple color so this is a true statement the reason is wedge shape of hypergranulosis is seen in lichen planus this is again true you will see wedge shaped it means irregular hyperpigmentation and please remember this wedge shape hypergranulosis is responsible for whitish lines over it which is known as wickham's stripe so wedge shape hypergranulosis is responsible for wickham stripe it is not responsible for dermal melanin please remember the dermal melanin why melanin is seen in derm is because of basal cell degeneration because of the damage to the basal cell the melanin falls down in the dermis so both these statements are correct but they are not the correct explanation of each other so you all are right nimisha raj ashima uh, lms manali dr abhi everybody is right the correct answer of this question is option number 2 both assertion and reason are true and the reason is not a correct explanation of the assertion mm -hmm. if anyone has any confusion please give me a quick thumbs up or uh, just ask me if you have any confusion the next question is on your computer screen this one anyone with any confusion let me know now a patient with erythematous scaly lesions on the extensor aspect of the elbow knee which of the following statement regarding the pathophysiology of this disorder is incorrect which of the following statement regarding the pathophysiology of this disorder is incorrect abhi pooja ashima raj anyone patient with erythematous scaly lesions on the extensor aspect of elbow knee which of the following statement is incorrect first of all can you tell me what is the diagnosis here this is a very classical example of psoriasis erythematous plaque with silvery white or micaceous scales on the extensor aspect very classical of psoriasis now what is incorrect about the pathophysiology you will see hyper proliferation that is true genetic predisposition is seen and you see lot of cytokines like interferons tnf and interleukin but deficiency of th1 and 17 is not seen you will see increase in the th1 and th17 cell lines you will see increase in th1 and th17 cell lines if this is clear i would request a quick thumbs up from all my dear students clear hai very nice okay let's do this uh, very simple question which is the most characteristic sign of psoriasis on histopath can you answer this it's a very easy question what is the most characteristic sign of psoriasis in histopath anyone very nice the correct answer is please remember presence of nucleus sorry presence of neutrophils in the epidermis which is known as micromundroapsis presence of neutrophil collection of neutrophil actually in stratum corneum it's a very very specific feature or the most characteristic feature of psoriasis on histopathology okay so the answer to this question is option number 1 only few students have given me the answer okay 
now let's move to the next question okay this is another question on the screen what is the answer 30 year old male with silvery white scales on the extensor aspect of elbow knee which of the following test is diagnostic anyone A 30 year old male presented with silvery white scales on the extensor aspect of elbow knee. Which of the following clinical test aid in the diagnosis? Which of the following clinical test aid in the diagnosis? Again, the question is from the same topic that is psoriasis. And please remember, we have just now discussed that there is a very easy, simple bedside investigation to prove the diagnosis, and that is Gerardage test, which is another name for. Ospitz sign or Ospitz test. Okay, so the name of the test is Garatage test, and that sign is known as Ospitz sign. Anyone with any confusion? Anyone with any confusion? Now, the next question is on your screen. We have a eight-day-old child with no history of consanguinity in the parent. Mother reports blisters, peeling of the skin at the site of handling. Pressure, similar history in the previous child which proved to be fatal. What is the diagnosis? So, I am briefing it again. Please remember from 26th of uh, July, we are starting with dermatology course. It is a plus class. The dermatology course is getting started. This course is specially for INI CT students. Uh, the course is starting on 26th of July on Unacademy Learning app. For enrollment, you need to use a code and the code is CHESHTA10. If you use this code, you will get 20% discount. 20% discount on Unacademy. This offer is only valid till tomorrow, that is 22nd of this month. So, requesting all of you to kindly go ahead and avail this description. Now the answer here is option number 3. It is a very classical description of mechanobullous disorders. Why do I say that it is mechanobullous? Because the peeling occurs on slight pressure or slight trauma to the skin in a newborn. Very very classical of congenital epidermolysis bullosa. Mm -hmm. Now look at this image. Can you see the middle image? Can you see this middle image? You can see that he is a newborn and in this newborn you can see a lot of peeling. In few cases when this peeling heals, it leaves behind the scarring. And this is a very characteristic scarring which is known as mitten hand deformity. Very very characteristic scarring which is known as mitten hand deformity. Is this clear? The next question is on your screen. Patient develops bulla without erythema on elbow, knee, sacral area, followed by crust formation, scarring and melia. He had no photosensitivity, negative family history and DIF shows IgG depositions at DE junction with no blood vessel involvement is seen. What is the probable diagnosis here? Seema, Nimisha, Abhi, Manali, Nilu, Raj, anyone? Now again, if you look at the question, it says the lesions are on the extensor, trauma prone area. So it is a mechanobullous disorder. Now please remember mechanobullous disorders are mainly congenital. Where you have congenital gene defect and because of which some of the proteins which forms the epidermis or dermis or basin membrane is deficient. But there is a very rare variety which is acquired and it is called as EB acquisita. In this variant, the clinical feature is very similar to EB dystrophica, but the difference is you have autoantibodies 
against collagen 7 in EB equisita. So, there is a acquired antibodies which causes the damage to collagen 7 and because of autoantibody the DIF become positive in these individuals. Clear? So, the correct answer is option number 2. Everybody was marking option number 4. Why option number 4? In bullous pamphigoid there is no scarring. So, why are you marking bullous pamphigoid? The question clearly mentioned that there is scarring. Okay? So, please, please do not get confused. It is a very easy question. I hope this is clear to all of you. Next, we got a very similar question this year in NEED PG 2022. We got a very similar question in NEED PG 2022. Anybody remembers that question? The question was a female presented with diffuse ear loss. She suffered from COVID infection. I think the duration was 6 months in the question. Okay. So, very similar question was given in NEET PG 2022. Anyone can tell me the answer? Abhi, Neelu, Ashima, I hope everybody is ready. This question I have understood. This is the answer of this question is telogen effluvium. Please remember. Whenever there is a acute illness like typhoid, uh, malaria or if there is coronavirus infection, post-pregnancy, what happens? There is sudden cessation of anagen phase. So, instead of completing 2 to 5 years in the anagen phase, the hairs are quickly shifted or the hair cycle is quickly shifted to the subsequent catagen and telogen and that is why hairs will fall very fast or a large proportion of the hair enters the telogen and because of which there is a fall of the hair after 3 months. So, please remember this is telogen effluvium. While in anagen effluvium, you will see secondary to cancer chemotherapy. We all know that cancer chemotherapy, they, they work on rapidly dividing cells and in the hair, the rapidly dividing cells are present in the anagen phase. Mm -hmm. So, I think both these questions are clear to you. Now, there is a very interesting question. I want all my students to solve this one. Anyone? I am waiting for the answer. Anybody can tell me the answer here. Very nice. Now please look at this question. The question is a sequence based question where you have to arrange the pre-malignant condition in order of their risk of malignant transformation from the most potent or most malignant potential to least malignant potential. Please remember erythroplakia although it is a rare condition it is having the maximum risk of getting converted into malignancy followed by non-homogeneous then homogeneous then ulcerative and then lacy. So, the sequence become 1 or A then 3 then 2, then 4. So, 1, 3, 2, 4, that is option number 1. So, anybody have answered this question? Very nice. Tabasum, I think you are right. And uh, Pavitra, you are also right. The correct answer is option number 1 because erythroplakia. So, let us write erythroplakia followed by non homogeneous and then homogeneous. Leukoplakia and in the last it is the ulcerative ulcerative or erosive erosive oral lichen planus ulcerative or erosive oral lichen planus clear so okay the question says from most to least okay so please don't read it incorrect it is from most to least and that is why option number one becomes the correct answer from most to least i hope this is clear to everyone can i get a quick thumbs up from all of you 
anybody with any confusion now the next question is here tell me the correct answer what is the correct answer here very nice please remember except for congenital syphilis all of these have papulo squamous lesions what do you mean by papulo squamous papules means small raised lesions and squamous means associated with scales and squamous with means associated with scale so small raised lesions associated with scale very very classical of very very classical of papulo squamous lesions in congenital syphilis instead of scaly plaques or papules you see vesicles and bulla so this is an example of vesiculo bullous lesion not a papulo squamous lesion okay so i think only three students are right four students kuldeep ashima manali and pavitra only four students are right so i think we are done with majority of the question let's see if i am having any more questions yes few sequence based questions are left arrange the following blistering disorders in order of their fluid collection levels in the skin from top to bottom now this is a very interesting question here you should know that what is the exact level of defect in all these conditions please remember in in heli heli disease the problem is very similar to that of pemphigus vulgaris supra basal because here you have defect in a gene which is responsible for function of desmoglein 3 in pemphigoid it is the basement membrane which is defective or the level of split occurs at the basement membrane in eb dystrophica the split occurs at the level of dermis and bullous impetigo the level occurs at the subcorneal level so now it becomes very easy for you to answer the answer is number 1 then sorry answer is number 4 then number 1 then number 2 and then number 3 so 4 1 2 3 is the correct answer okay 4 1 2 3 is the correct answer so with this we are done with the today's session and uh, let us very quickly tell you some of the important features so i would be requesting all my students to please kindly avail please kindly avail this offer of 20% discount this offer is only till 22nd of july that is till tomorrow please use my code chesta10 and get 20% discount the dermatology classes are starting on 26th of july so please go ahead and get your subscription and watch all the classes revise your dermatology after that we'll have a lot of tnd sessions the new batches which are which have started today the mission ini ct batch which is a 4 hour a day course again use the same code that is chesta10 for getting yourself enrolled this code will give you 20% discount we have a focus fmg batch again a very interesting batch so please subscribe this batch this is very important and the last is a neat pg batch so again very important please use this code so thank you all of you good day take care and we'll meet again with another interesting session like that till then take care